kind of research that I do concerns mobility profiling and the use of intelligent incentives in order to better inform people so that they can make more sustainable choices about the way that they travel and if they travel at all. The big data picture within the whole scenario that goes with the low carbon futures, the green agenda, eco savings and so on. And I'm very, very keen that within this we do actually engage with real life people uh, because in my view too much big data experimentation is taking place with so-called friendly users who are people in the same workplace as the people doing the research or students and so on. So I'm very keen that we get out and really engage with real life members of the public. One of the questions that's asked of me sometimes from members of the public is, what do you think would incentivise me to change? You know, I have a routine and I have a habit in terms of the transport choices that I make. So some examples of the kinds of things that we do. I think we're all familiar with things like Nectar and, and the points system, where we are rewarded from the consumer choices that we make within the, the supermarkets, but also um, increasing a little bit on the train. So some train operators use this as well. Now, points are very nice because it actually gives gives the choice of reward back to the person who is earning the, the reward. Um, so that means that we don't have to struggle with what kind of person this is, what are their likes and dislikes. And people like to accrue points, we know, from different uh, schemes that are out there. So from maybe making transport choices, from maybe booking particular services online, from making choices in, in supermarkets. So points are one. We also talk about information as being a positive incentive as well. People who are properly informed about the choices that, that are available to them actually feel very well incentivised to be able to reconsider the way that they're making, making journeys. We have done uh, serious games, gamification, so this is challenges and, and things like this so this section of the population who really like to engage um, with that we feed back information to people as well uh, which is a different kind of incentive so knowing for example what your carbon footprint is for a particular kind of journey and knowing that you could halve it or, or or whatever through making a different kind of journey or a journey by a different mode for some people that actually is the clue to triggering them into reconsidering their situation and then there are a variety of other things that we have used and maybe will use. So things like uh, free muffin and coffee at a local cafe or a restaurant could, could be an incentive. We've also played around with things like cinema tickets. So we work with a variety of third party suppliers in terms of what these things could be. And we're very keen to engage with providers of incentives and to explore what the business model is for people to be a provider of incentives in this kind of transport scheme. It is about different kinds of people working together rather than us doing research in our particular niche because we are all experts in our niche and we're all keen to continue as experts but actually broadening our horizons and working with people who are legal experts, who are ethicists, specialists in different kinds of technology, people work in different modes. I think we've got a lot to learn from the air, the aviation sector for example about automation and we need to start to have that dialogue rather than seeing that community as doing its research and, and ourselves as sort of highways and, and road surface transport doing our research. So really, a lot of the blockages, I think, will start to become unlocked by us working together. In terms of big data, I think we will continue to collect it. I think many of the debates that are running at the moment, I think, will be closed down very, very quickly. Even over the last two years, I've seen the agenda shift on very, very quickly in terms of, of some of the issues. But I think that we will see far more in the way of embedded sensors around the system, but a real stripping out of the tangible, visible evidence of those sensors being around us. I think we will see a restoring of the landscape, that the motorways, for example, will stripped of their gantries, that a lot of the urban spaces will be greened and will uh, have the traffic signals and lights and so on will be gone and we will be back in. Um, it sounds a little bit utopian and maybe this is wishful thinking more than anything else but I think we'll be back in some very very pleasant um, livable cities and, and communities.